The following presentation is a gift from the team at Streamline Publishing, publishers of Fine Art Connoisseur, Plain Air Magazine, and weekly newsletters Fine Art Today, Realism Today, Plain Air Today, and American Watercolor, and events, the Plain Air Convention and the Figurative Art Convention. We offer over 400 different art instruction tutorials and ultra high quality video by the world's leading artists. If you like what you see, help us support our artists and our team with your purchase. Each video aired has a special discount code for today only in the comments section with a link to the video offered. And to see everything we do, or if you want to receive notice of new releases, new products, and new events for artists, simply click the other link, which says, see everything we do. Thank you. Hi, I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plen Air Magazines. Today, Sherry Christensen has a video about keeping an eye out. As an artist, I'm sure you know what that means, but you're about to find out. Hi. I'm Sherry Christensen, and um, today I'm going to show you how to paint farm animals. Um, I'm going to be using photos because they don't sit still. I don't want to bring a rooster into here. So um, anyway, I wanted to explain too, though, you should always paint from life before you paint um, from photos because a photo is going to send, the lights are going to get too light or the darks are going to get too dark and it's harder to see the color. So if you haven't painted before, I would suggest setting up a still life, put a strong light on it, practice so you get used to how to see color. But if you have and you're ready to go, uh, let me show you what I'm going to do here. I've got two photos. I do realize they're, fo they're focusing different ways. Um, this is the photo that I'm going to be um, painting from. And as you can see, the lights are blown out on the photo. I wanted to get this whole shadow shape of the rooster light enough so I can see the color and what's happening there. The photo below is so it gives me an idea of a background color, something that's not blown out with the lights um, that I can use um, as a reference. So I'm using the photos just as a reference. It's not going to be an exact copy. That, that, that's not my purpose. My purpose is to make it a piece of art. So I will not be sticking straight to the photo. And, and yourself, when you're doing it, you can do the same thing. So use it as a reference, but don't try to copy it exactly. Um, everything's in relationship. So you want to... When you're looking at it, first you're going to start the sketch. Uh, then you're going to block in your shadow shapes and then the midtone of your light shapes. And then you're going to compare things. You want everything in the shadow to stay in the shadow, all the values, and everything in the lights to stay in the lights. You don't want the values in your dark area to get too high that it's the same as the values in your light area. Um, I'll talk more about that later, going over value, because that's, that's an important concept and probably the most difficult one. Um, but let me show you my palette and what I use to paint. Um, I like Gamblin paints. Uh, you can use any paint, really. It's just I like the buttery texture of it. Um, but whatever works for you is fine. I keep a limited palette. I find limiting the palette, especially if you haven't painted a lot, keeps um, your color swimming in the same tone range. If you have too many different paints, one, you don't learn how to mix, which is very important, and two, the colors don't seem to be in the same atmosphere. Okay, so I've got um, quick dry white. I paint really thick, <laughs> so that's why I do the white with quick, quick dry. Um, I've got cad yellow uh, deep here. Uh, you can also use cad yellow medium if you like. I like a really warm um, lights. I, I paint really warm. Um, so the deep works better for me. Uh, yellow okra. 
Uh, I use occasionally, not a lot, but I like to have it on the palette. Cad Red Light, um, also for those really bright, warm colors. Um, Alizarin Crimson, and I use the Alizarin Crimson Permanent because Alizarin Crimson is not, um, it doesn't hold its color really well. The Permanent it should last longer, not change as much um, as it ages. Um, moving over to this side, I've got um, Thala Green, which I only use a little bit of. You could even take that off your palette if you wanted to, because you can mix it with Thalo Blue and a little yellow. Um, Thalo Blue, this co color, be very, very careful with. Um, a little bit goes a long way. <laughs> and a lot of people get in trouble when they use too much of it because it, it's hard to get rid of what's, what's on your canvas. So, um, best just keep it light. If you're tinting it with white, only add a little bit at a time till you get the right color. Um, last, uh, ivory black. Um, some artists don't use black. I use black. <laughs> Um, usually I mix the black with a little bit of the alizarin crimson because the alizarin is transparent and the black isn't. So the uh, transparency of the alizarin makes it just a more vibrant color um, and, and doesn't make it sink so much onto the painting. Process. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start doing a really loose sketch. Um, I keep it loose. Basically, I'm looking for the big shapes. Um, paint the dog before the fleas. And you want a good drawing, but as you paint, what's going to happen is it's going to get adjusted because I don't want you to feel like I got to stay in the lines. Um, colors reflect on each other. It's okay to go out of the lines. Um, if you lose the drawing, you can get it back. Um, as you continue on. And also I'll be correcting myself along the way. When I get the other shapes, I look at um, drawings as shapes. So as I get the different shapes, I can compare them against each other and I can see you know, where my drawing might be off and, and adjust it from there. Um, the other thing is while you're doing this, I'm gonna start on the shadow shapes and Everything's relative in painting. So what I like you to do is keep the shadows all in a similar value range so they hold together and try to see a shadow shape that continues through the painting rather than a lot of different shadows everywhere because that makes it jumpy. And you want to be bringing um, the viewer's eye to a certain area, which um, with the rooster is going to be up towards his head. Uh, let's see. So we've got the shadow shapes and um, comparing that. From that, I will go on and do the mid-tones in the lights. And why I'm saying mid-tones is because you want to leave yourself room for the lightest lights and darkest darks. So if you started out with everything too dark, you couldn't apply the darkest darks. And if you made everything too light in the lights, you couldn't put those highlights on. Paint Paint won't allow you the same thing that Mother Nature will. You don't have a, as wide a range. Um, important to try to keep things in a good value range, um, meaning not a lot of different values. Um, you know, if you've got your shadow shape, you've got your mid-tones, you've got your um, lightest lights, you've got your darkest darks, you don't need a lot more than that. You can still model the form, keeping your values close together so your shadows don't get lighter than your lights or your lights don't get darker than your shadow. I think that's probably enough to, um, to get started. Okay, let me tell you the brushes that I use. Um, for oil painting, I like a bristle brush the best. Um, some people use sable. It depends if you want the feel of the brush stroke. Um, you want to see the stroke on the canvas, or if you want a smooth edge. I love paint, so I love um, to see the paint and actually the brush strokes. So these are all bristle um, brushes, um, filberts. I have a 
well, I don't have it out of here, but most of mine are filberts. Every once in a while I have a square um, or a uh, bright, which is um, a little shorter. Some of the filberts are long, some are a little bit shorter, and that makes it more of a, a bright um, hog bristle brushes. Uh, they do, <laughs> after I work on them a little bit, um, they do break, but I, I just keep them so I have different <laughs> different sizes and different effects um, with each brush. Um, I also use a palette knife. Um, this one's pretty old. <laughs> I think it came from Italy, but the more I use it, the more I get um, the feel of it. Um, I'll be doing most of this painting in brush, but I may um, add some palette knife for effect. Also, it cleans the palette well. As far as what I'm painting on, um, most people, I, I'm painting on an ampersand board. Um, I like boards because I like the, the feel of it. I don't like the give of a canvas. You can paint on whatever you want. It can be canvas, board, same process. I paint a lot with palette knife and with a board. These things get sharp after you use them a lot. I don't have to worry about it cutting it. And uh, with a canvas, I I've cut it before. So so this is my choice. The gesso, I pre-gessoed it. Um, you can just have a white and then do a tone with your, your paint. Um, I have uh, Gamasol in here, odorless min mineral spirits, fine. Um, if you're going to do a tone, just a little bit of that, and whatever color you like or you think that works for the subject as an overall color. I like warm paintings, so I use this um, Venetian red gesso. Um, I like to have some of it show through in the painting. I think it gives it more warmth and it unifies the whole piece. Um, so that's why I choose that. If you, you want to do your own color gesso, I've done that before too, just adding um, an acrylic color to the, the gesso and um, it will give you, you know, whatever color you want. Um, the benefit to me of this versus just a tone that I wipe down is the tone sometimes can mix with the paint. And if I've got red and I put green on top of it and it mixes in, I got gray. <laughs> and I don't want that. I want the warmth coming through. So this is how I tone um, all of my um, boards before I start. So with that, I think I will start painting. <laughs> so I'm going to start, like I said, just doing a very rough sketch. And um, I'll try to uh, uh, add in what I'm going to do um, in each section of the painting. Um, I'm ready to start the sketch, so let's get at it. You can sketch it in whatever ever color you feel fits your setup the most. Um, I like alizarin and crimson, so that's what I'm using. What I'm doing here is I'm just making the basic placement um, of where I want them to sit. And you'll see me making adjustments as I go, but I'm looking really at the big shapes right now. The Brewster is really a triangle. So, I mean, you could even go as basic <laughs> as that. See, there's a triangle. Now I'm noticing I want a little bit more for his head, so I'm going to drop him a little bit. I'm also going to give him a little more puffy rooster chest. He's my rooster, so I know him well. <laughs>
not really going for exactness right now, just to get the basic shapes, because it'll change as I go. But I want a good placement. My guy's a younger rooster, so his tail isn't fully developed. So I'm going to take a little artistic license and add more. Okay, I'm also going to draw in the shadow shapes so you don't forget those. I'm leaving out the other chickens because I think they're more of a distraction. Light's coming from behind him, so I want to make sure I've got the shadow shape going forward. I like more shadow than what's in this original one, so I'm going to carry it down further. All of these are subjective, so it's you as the artist deciding what you want to do to make changes. Um, What I'd say, though, is always stick with your color range that's in the photo. Don't try to do something else um, because everything's relative. And if you decide you want a sunny day and it's a cloudy day, it's not going to work. <laughs> okay, I'm liking him, but I'm thinking he's a little too um, far up. So I want to bring him down. I'll either extend him a little bit or I may have to drop it. But, and this is, this is what you as an artist need to do when you're doing your own painting. You get it up. That's why I keep it simple. So you're not redrawing the whole drawing. You're just looking at the shapes. Then you make the adjustments. Because why do this fine-tuned drawing if you're going to wipe it out and just do it again? Get the shapes so you can see where it is. Also look at the negative shapes. Now, I really like this negative shape here. 
But over here, I'm not, I'm not liking it as well. So I'm going to play and see what I get with that. artistic license again. Um, the leg coming out here um, looks awkward to me. I painted roosters enough to know if he was strutting more, that other leg um, would show. So I'm trying it. Okay, I like them better. <laughs> um, I just felt like this needed needed something more, and I think that that's more interesting. Um, when you do it yourself, you can try it. If it doesn't look right or it looks awkward, just go back to where you were before. Great thing about paint, you can wipe it off, do it again. Okay, so now, my second step, I'm going to start with the shadow shapes. Again, the big shapes. I'm not going to really get into detail too much right now. And I'm going to try to connect the shadows as much as I can to keep the painting um, flowing and holding it all together. I'm using a fairly um, large brush because I want to keep myself from getting into the nitty little details. Um, need the big shapes, uh, the, roost the rooster before the feathers. <laughs> okay, again, I'm um, using black and I'm adding a little alizarin to it to um, keep it more transparent. Now I can see that there's all these blues and greens in here, but I'm starting with the underlying shape. Um, those are reflected lights um, coming on top of there. I like to keep it really loose, um, keeping some of the red showing through below it. Um, and I'm also going to go in and do those highlights at the, at the end, so I, I want to leave room and not have the paint um, too thick. And roosters, 
they f- they flow a lot. So I w- wanted to give it the, the idea of the actual feathers without actually painting little feathers. Now he has some other areas that are also um, this darker color. Um, again, with reflected light on them. So I'm going to be putting them um, in at the same time. As you can see, there's a lot of detail on the photo, and I'm not doing detail yet. Not really worried here about staying within the lines. A little bit of the darker color coming up here on his head. Okay, I think that's it for that dark, dark. My next dark is um, is kind of this background, so I'm going to do that. With the thalos, um, as you see, I'm using a little of the cad red to kind of tone it down. So I'm not looking at a super bright. I don't want, I want the brightness to be on this tail, not, not the background so much. There are three things when you're doing the colors you need to compare. And, um, one is the hue. You know, is it is it black? Is it blue? Is it green? Yellow? Red? Um, once you decide what color that is, you need to decide if it's warm or cool. Um, you know, people think, okay, blue's cool, yellow's warm. We know that, but there's also warm and cool yellows and warm and cool blues. Once you decide that, and how you decide it is comparing things against each other. It's all relative to what's on the canvas. It's not about mixing it and matching it to the photo. You want to keep everything on the canvas relative. So you've got your um, your color, your warmth, and your intensity. What I was just talking about is mixing the color, and I grade it down by its complement, So it's not as intense as some of the other colors. For the other colors to look intense, you have to have some more subdued colors in that. So there's a lot of things to think about when you're painting in color. Um, Also value uh, basically uh, a grayscale. And actually I have a black and white painting to give you an idea of value because a lot of people when they look at um, color, <laughs> they just see the color. They think it's, well, it's red, but they might have it in the wrong value range. Um, you can have a red that is, um, say, this color, um, or you can have a red that's so dark, uh, kind of like, you know, lizard mixed with the black, that is, I shouldn't say color, that value. So your red could be that value, that value, that value. How you figure out which value it is, is by putting it on the canvas or the board, comparing it against other reds you're using there, or against other blues, depending on the color. So value is really important, and when I say shadow shapes, I'm talking about these dark shapes 
in here and over here too. So all those shadow shapes will hold together. And all these shadow shapes are darker than these light shapes, the light hitting it. That's the way you get form. Light hitting the form, showing the shadow hitting the form or, you know, falling from the form. So it's really important while you're painting to compare your values um, while you're comparing your color, your intensity, um, and the warmth of the paint. Hi, I'm Sherry Christensen, and um, today I'm going to show you how to paint farm animals. Um, I'm going to be using photos because they don't sit still, and I don't want to bring a rooster into here. So um, anyway, I wanted to explain too, though, you should always paint from life before you paint um, from photos, because a photo is going to send, the lights are going to get too light or the darks are going to get too dark and it's harder to see the color. So if you haven't painted before, I would suggest setting up a still life, put a strong light on it, practice so you get used to how to see color. But if you have and you're ready to go, uh, let me show you what I'm going to do here. Okay, what I've done here, um, even though it's not showing on there, I've connected the shadow shape because I like to see it connected. It'll get broken up when I, I put the lights on, but um, just to remind me to keep that connected. If you make all shadow here and no shadow here, it's, it's going to look funny. Um, besides, you've got the shadow, the roosters um, throwing um, this way towards the front. She's got this little extra red here. So I'm carrying a little more shadow um, down through there so it's not such a, a big transition because when I put the lights up on his head, that, that's where I want you to go. One thing I haven't mentioned, um, if you start to get a palette that looks like mine where you don't have any room to work, um, at least clean off part of it so you can work with some fresh paint, which I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to work... Um, some of my blue in here too, so don't forget. <laughs> it's really got iridescent feathers, they're beautiful. There's a little warmth reflected in this cooler shadow.
Okay. <laughs> Other than if I come back and take a look and if I need to touch something up. Otherwise, we're done. Thank you. Well, that was from Keeping an Eye Out with Sherry Christensen, and you can learn more about it at lilyartvideo.com. And today only, we have a special discount code in the comments section. Be sure to check that out. Thank you for watching.